up guys, Auto Fanatics. So I'm inside the Ferrari 355 and you look at the dash, we have no radio. So this car came with an aftermarket stereo, which I completely gutted and tore out. You just don't want to have old aftermarket stuff. You don't know who put it in and it could also cause a lot of problems, especially with cars like this and an older Ferrari or Lamborghini or exotic car can go on fire very easily. So if you look at photos, I'll throw some photos up here. This is the way the dashboard was when I took delivery of this car a number of weeks ago. I already knew what I was up against before it got here, so I started searching for period correct head units for this car. So here we are here. So this is a brand new, new old stock bezel that I got from Italy, and that's already installed. I already reinstalled the gauges. Everything is wired up. I left in the Alpine wiring harness here just temporarily. We're gonna use this as a guide, and I'm gonna go over on the bench. I'm gonna show you the radio that was in the car, and I'm gonna to explain to you why on a classic Ferrari, this is considered a classic car now, it's a 26 year old car, <clears throat> I highly suggest you keep it period correct. If you want a car with modern conveniences and bells and whistles, just go drive one of your modern cars. This is a car that you're supposed to preserve and leave it as is. If you want to modify it with an exhaust, brake upgrade, wheels, something that's easily reversible, that's fine, but when it comes to electronics, you have to be very, very careful in an older Italian or exotic car because the electrical systems by design, we're never able to handle the load of all the other upgrades that are on this car. This car also had a K40 laser jammer, diffuser, all kinds of stuff. I tore everything out of the car, and now it's going back to stock. So let's get over on a workbench. I'm going to show you guys a really cool piece that all I just right, got. So like I said, this is the Alpine radio that came out of the car. This radio dates back about 10 years ago. So 2010, it lights up blue, does not match the aesthetic of the car. It has all this high-tech stuff that I just don't want in the car. Now... I was searching for a couple of weeks for an Alpine radio from 1994, 1995, did not come up with anything brand new in the box. I was looking for something brand new in the box, what they call new old stock. And believe it or not, a lot of people hoard vintage car audio stuff. I used to be a hoarder as well, but I sold off all my vintage Macintosh Soundstream and Precision Power stuff many years ago. I just never really saw a need for it, considering that modern cars are so hard to integrate car audio systems in. So this is the radio that's going in the car. This is a Kenwood KDC 7003. This is new old stock, brand new in the box, never installed. Now, this came with the case. I got the uncut factory wiring harness. I got the original box, which you see here. And another cool thing about this, on the original box, and I posted this on my Instagram feed, it has the original retail price of $510, $1994-95 money. That was big money. This was the top of the line Kenwood unit at the time. It's got the warranty card, all the paperwork in the original packaging. So I was able to source this through a seller on eBay. And like I said, if you're patient and you kind of know what you're looking for, you will find one. So another thing too, this is the top of the line Kenwood head unit for the vintage. It lights up green. It's exactly what I want. It's going to match the aesthetic perfectly fine. But here's the, the coolest thing about this radio. And the reason why I just had to have it and it's got to go into the Ferrari that I'm working on is that this radio's manufacturing month and year is the exact as the Ferrari F355 that I'm working on. So it is 100% period correct. I'm not going to show you guys the installation of the radio because like I said, it's very basic. There's the harness from the Alpine still in the car. All I got to do is just solder and terminate a couple of these leads and take that harness out and it's pretty much good to go. But I'm going to show you guys final view of the Kenwood Vintage KDC 7003 installed in the Ferrari dash, which has a brand new new old stock bezel. All the wiring is put back to stock and we're going to keep it very basic because in my opinion, when you put a lot of aftermarket stuff in an older car, you're just looking for trouble. Look at uh, Hoovy's. Hoovy's Garage had an F-355 Spider that burst up into the flames, and that had a very big aftermarket Macintosh stereo system from the period that God only knows who installed it, and it's just a very risky thing to do. And I suggest for anybody out there that watches this, you can do whatever you want, but if you're restoring a car like a vintage Porsche, a BMW, Mercedes, a Ferrari, even an import car like a Honda or an Acura NSX, I really suggest you keep it period correct. Don't go for all the bells and whistles. The whole purpose of having the ownership experience of an older car is to drive it and feel it as it was in the period. Because modern cars today have everything integrated. They're so damn good. The progression of technology is superior to what we had 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Why do you want to try to integrate modernism into vintage 
technology. It just doesn't make sense to me. I'm totally against it. And like I said, I was a big proponent of doing aftermarket when I was a kid. That was how I got into the car customization world. And when these cars were brand new, we worked on hundreds of these 355 Ferraris. And a lot of you guys may not know, but the earlier 355 Ferraris did not come with a head unit. The head units were supplied by the Ferrari dealers. And then the dealers would contract the car out to a custom shop like our old shop. And we would do a full blown stereo. We would sell the customer on an alarm system, a radar. And that's just what it was in the 1990s up until, you know, cars became very, very complex to uh, integrate all this stuff as easily as it was in the 80s and 90s. So I'm going to get this thing installed today. I'm going to show you guys the illumination, the functions and the aesthetic. And uh, like I said, if anybody has any questions or if you guys are working on a restoration project and you need help sourcing period correct components, you're always welcome to contact me through the Auto Fanatic website and through my resources, I will do my best to help you find the correct item for your restoration. So I'm gonna get started on this and I'll be back in a little while, guys. Hey, what's up, guys? So I'm back a week later. So the Kenwood radio that I was so gung-ho on getting it in this car was dead on arrival. What does that mean? The radio illuminated, but it did not function. No sound came out of the outputs and no sound came out of the built-in amplifier as well. So moving forward, I contacted the seller. He was kind enough to accept it as a return and give me my full money back. That's awesome. I picked up that same day that he took the return back a Sony CDX 5100, which is also a period correct radio complete in the box. This thing is like absolutely freaking flawless. It's got all the manuals, all the screws, all the hardware, including a remote control. I used to have this radio back in 94, 95 and 96 on several of my cars. So I'm going to get this radio installed. But before I do it in the car, I'm going to properly bench test it with a satellite speaker from my home and a power supply because I'm not gonna waste my time because this car is really hard to bend yourself over and get under that dash and uh, it's not that easy to work on. So I'm gonna get bench tested right now and we're gonna get it in the car. <laughs> school right here and it still works Alright guys, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching this video on installing a period correct radio in an older car. Like I said, you guys can do whatever you want. I'm all about originality and something that's an older car. I don't really believe mixing so much modern with the vintage of the era. But like I said, if you guys are interested, you're restoring a VW, BMW, Porsche, Chevrolet, anything from, you know, the 70s, 80s, 90s, and you want a period correct radio, you know, there's sources out there. If you guys need help, on finding a period correct radio, you're more than welcome to always send me an inquiry through the Auto Fanatic web shop. I am a licensed appraiser and inspector of classic cars and specialty cars, and that's a big part of my business, my other business that's not, you know, called Auto Fanatic. So, like I said, when I see an older car, I like to recommend cars that don't have a lot of aftermarket equipment because you just don't know the history of who installed that equipment and what's possibly going to go wrong including electrical problems and also the possibility of fires so like i said i hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching please subscribe to the auto fanatic channel for more automotive content and i hope you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys in the next video real soon